Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for For the Love of Crafting, five Valentine's Day Creations from the Heart mini-series. My name is Leah, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Now, Craftsy, the Knitting Circle, National Sewing Circle, and National Quilter Circle have all teamed up to provide a week of live demonstrations and a bundle of Valentine's Day-inspired patterns and recipes. Make sure to download the free patterns for yourself and the recipes by clicking the link in the description. Now, every day this week, a new instructor is going to stream live as you quilt, sew, knit, and bake. And they will be providing step-by-step -step demonstrations of all of these key projects that are perfect for gifting to your loved ones on this Valentine's Day. Now, if you have any questions during today's event, please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I will, of course, be monitoring the comments during the event, and I'd like to encourage you right now, this is your very first chance to go ahead and use that chat box. We want to hear from you what type of mini-series you might be interested in the future, what types of themes of projects are you like wanting to see more of, or maybe just shout out and say hi from where you're viewing from. We love to know. Uh, where we are gathering viewers from all over as we participate in these events together. So before I bring our instructor on, I will let everybody know she has given me a little teaser that there are a few steps to this project today. And so we'll be saving some of your more general questions towards the end of the project and we'll get to them if we can. But as always, if you have specific questions as she's guiding you through the project, keep those coming and I will feed them to her as we go if it seems like something really important to jump in. So without further ado, we are going to introduce you to today's instructor. It is Emily Steffen. She's joining us today from the National Sewing Circle. Hello, Emily. Thank you for being here. I'm going to start us off by having you tell us a little bit about yourself and what project we'll be diving into today. Hello and happy Valentine's month, everybody. We are going to be <laughs> tackling a super fun and I'm going to say simple project. And I know, I know you're going to say this. This doesn't look simple. It is simple. I promise you. And it is a zip your lip, zipper lip pouch. How fun is this? This is a perfect gift you can give to your Galentine or Valentine or neighbor or bestie or pop in the mail to a family or friend and fill it full of really fun goodies. Because I mean, you can go out on the town or out to your living room with this cute little zipper pouch. And heck, you can even put little love notes in it so that you're actually speaking to your loved ones through it. Isn't this fun? So we're going to tackle um, the sewing of this and then the zipper insert as well. It's not hard. I promise it's so easy. And I have a handful of tips and tricks that will make you feel like you can ta tackle zippers on any zipper pouch going forward. So. Awesome. I'm going to start off with just one question that I've seen a couple people curious about. So as you get started, maybe you can talk a little bit about this, about the material, uh, not just that is recommended in the pattern that you have, Emily, but uh, any alternative materials that people can use for this project as well. Yes, I totally saw in the comments a few questions about this project. So if you see on the front cover of the pattern that Leah mentioned, this is available to download, you'll see that the edges of this pattern are raw, which means that it's not the seams are, you'll see, let me show you, are stitched on the outside. So I chose to use wool for this project because I, this edge right here is raw right there. So I chose to use wool. And the cool thing about this is you can go to Goodwill or any other thrift store and grab like an old blazer. And that's what this wool would be. It's just like a 100% wool. It's thick, thick and kind of hefty, which is nice for a zipper pouch because you know it will hold up. Um, you certainly can use any cotton that you want if you want to. The only thing is, is you're going to have to um, amend the pattern. And I'll bring that up when we get to that point of the demonstration of how to sew the edges a little bit differently. But any fabric that doesn't fray, so felt, wool, maybe jean, denim, how cute would this be? And like a jean fabric would be adorable. Um, anything that won't fray on the edges when you cut is really the only thing. You don't have to use wool. I love wool. It's nice and tactile. It's fun. <laughs> um, but the inside, let me just say this, the inside of the zipper lip for both of these is cotton. So it's just 100%. It's actually some remnants I had. But you could use anything on the inside as well. Simple. I actually have some lips in here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 
All right, well, I'm gonna let you get started. We have people saying hello from all over the world, as far away as France right now. So oh, keep yeah. your comments coming in. And like I said at the beginning, if you're just joining us, more general questions, we'll push to the end, but I think we're ready to dive into our project. So I'll send it right back to Emily. Awesome. So like Leah said, we will need wool for the outside, cotton for the inside, zipper is key. And then you'll want two different feet for your machine. And all of this is listed in this pattern. If you want it to be a little bit more um, laid out in a bullet point fashion, you'll need the two feet for your sewing machine, your zipper foot, and then your regular, you can use a quarter inch foot, you can use just a regular walking foot, anything like that would do. Um, disclaimer, I'm the kind of sewer that's not super duper specific. So you might have some specific questions and I will do my very best to answer it. But um, I kind of just do what I do and it works really well for me. So this is a, a freedom for anybody who's just busting out their sewing machine for the first time, maybe during quarantine or during this whole lockdown, that, that you don't have to have perfect sewing technique to make this awesome project. Just a little disclaimer for you. Um, so the very first step, I'm just gonna go along in this PDF as we're going here. The first step is to cut your pieces. The pattern is included in this PDF and all it is, this is it. Just a super simple, it's the half of the lip pattern. And you're gonna, sew, you're gonna cut the lining, which is the inside, this inside part, and then the wool, which is the outside, out of both, uh, excuse me, both of them out of this one pattern piece, which is pretty, pretty awesome that it's that simple, in my opinion. So I've already cut the lining here. I have two, and you cut it on the fold because we'll open it and it will obviously become lips here. So you'll cut two linings and two outsides. So I'm gonna cut the outsides. And um, again, you can use anything that doesn't fray on the edges if you feel like you have remnants in your sewing room, like probably most of us have in our sewing room. <laughs> um, so lay this out, you're gonna lay out your pattern piece right here and put it right here on the edge on the fold. Ta-da, and cut two of these out. You can use a rotary, you can pin it, but it's pretty straightforward for this. And you'll see that it is a easy cut. I say that and I'm, my blade is not super sharp, but that's okay. You don't have to have perfect supplies to make a perfect little zipper pouch, right? Lee, if any questions are coming in while I'm cutting about the materials or if anybody has any specifics, feel free to shoot them my way. We don't have any questions coming in just yet, but okay. a lot of shout outs from states all over the United States. Uh, people are jumping in, really excited about this quick project, mm. a really charming idea, Shirley says. So this is going to be really fun. And I know you mentioned before we started that Valentine's Day is a really fun holiday, but sometimes a little neglected in yes. little projects like this. So this is really exciting for us to get to see. It is fun. I feel like, too, um, we're using this, my kids and I are using this Valentine's Day to just write notes to to people that we haven't seen in a long time. So um, my daughter is, she's in preschool, so she's just learning her letters. So it's been a long process to write one little letter, but it's still really fun. And it's a fun way to encourage kids to connect with people, to actually send a letter. Now, let me slide in. A yeah. question did just pop in about what you're shifting to the side. Those yellow circles, are those oh, weights or they are, are they just spare um, pieces, random things? Yes, this is, okay, so you're probably going to ask me where these came from. And they came from my mom's sewing stash. So they're probably like really old. <laughs> and all they are is they're, they're weights. So you don't have to pin your pattern piece to the fabric, which I love because it makes it fast. If you can see, there's like, pin sharp tack ish sort of i don't know pointy things that actually hold it in place and it makes cutting something like this really easy because you don't actually have to pin your fabric you just put it on there and i mean sure i could move it a little bit but it doesn't really move that much they're awesome the brand is i don't know it just says weights so i'm not that great at telling you what they are but they're awesome i'm sure you could probably figure out how to make some with rice or something okay so two lips, outside lips, and two inside lips. This is still step one in this PDF. So the, the entire project is actually two sides, right? It's the front and the back. So the front, we're going to have to open the mouth insert. So we will take one outside and one inside. And this does not have to be exact at all. 
I like to cut them both together because then I know that even if I am off, I, then I'm off <laughs> together on both the inside and the outside. I already gave you a disclaimer that I'm not super exact sometimes. So I'll line them up as best as I can. And you can already see that my cutting is not perfect. This is a little bit, you know, janky on that side, but that is okay. I love these mats because they give you um, dots and squares to follow here. Then I will just take my ruler and cut open the mouth. Oops. Ta-da! Oh, boy. The joys of crafting live, right? So you're left <laughs> with <laughs> you're left with your top lip, your bottom lip, and then the back. So you'll have a lining for each of them, right? So this lining, this lining, and then your lining, your big lining. And that's all that is for that step one for cutting them. So you can set your cutting supplies aside. If you're crafting live too, I would love to would love to see your finished projects on Instagram or Facebook too as you're going. So, okay, this is the part I feel like people get really overwhelmed with zippers. And I have, I, I, I promise you zippers are so easy. I also, the, the pattern you'll see in the listing calls for a 14 inch, 16 inch zipper. This is clearly bigger than that. Here's a fun tip or trick for zippers. Did you know that you can just cut a zipper to length? Did you know that? Now, the problem is, is if you're like putting this in a jacket or something, you have to make sure that, because this little piece right here is obviously the stopper to a zipper. So you need to have a stopper of some kind, right? Like I don't want to open my zipper and go wee off the side. It does help that it's being sewn here, but here's what I do. I'll lay my zipper out and get it pretty flush right to the sides. And then this is all you do. Magic. Cut your zipper. Ta -da. And then you're going to bump over to your sewing machine. That's how much we cut off. In theory, you probably could add another pull and make this another zipper. I don't know how to do that, but if anybody does, pipe up because I would love to know that, <laughs> that piece of information. Um, then all you're going to do is, is sew back and forth right here to add the stop, like that stop part. It's really simple. So go over to your sewing machine. Oop. Make sure that you have a needle in that is durable enough to go over a zipper. I um, also disclaimer, I've never done this with a metal zipper. I've never sewn. This is the plastic zipper teeth. It's not metal zipper teeth. And all I'm doing is going back and forth. So backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and cut. And I just added a you, can, you can't really see it super well because my, my um, thread is the same color, an ending, right? So now when the zipper opens, watch, it stops right there. Ta-da! That's a little zipper tip for you. So you don't always have to run to the craft store every time you need a zipper. I just buy them in bulk in multiple different colors and sizes, and then I just always have them, which is really nice. So zipper tip for Tuesday. The second step to this project, again, it's laid out in the PDF. I'm just going to reference it so that I can follow along with what exactly you guys have. Whenever you're layering your zippers, so we're obviously making the, the opening of the zipper, it's going to open right across the face rather than like on the top or the side like what, like a backpack would. Um, but it's still the same exact concept. So what you will do, it says on here, layer your fabric, fabric as follows. Do your lining right side up, your zipper you're making a sandwich, your zipper, and then this on top. Because in theory, and here, let me just say this, this doesn't really have a wrong or right side, but I'm putting this right side down because you can't really see, but this has a little bit of a fuzz to it, and that's the part that I want in the outside of the finished zipper. So it's right side up, zipper, wrong side down, and you're making a little zipper sandwich. And then all you're going to do is stitch right along here with your zipper foot. Now, this is what my zipper foot looks like on my Janome. I sew on a Janome 9450, which is like the magic of all magic sewing machines. And the reason this is a zipper foot, for, for if, this is, if this zipper situation is new to you, what it's going to do is there's no like bulk on either side of the foot, right? Like it's, it's skinnier than what a lot of what a lot of other feet look like. 
it's going to allow you to stitch really, really, really close to the teeth right here, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to replace my foot on my sewing machine. You know, Emily, I'm going to slide a question in here Please for do. you as well. Uh, to the sewing machine. Uh, Katrina is curious if you know what type of needle you used because you mentioned the needle. What specific one are you working with? So every um, sewing machine brand will likely have some recommended um, brands of needles that they use. And in those brands, you'll see, as a matter of fact, I have packaging for one of them. This is a Schmetz needle, right? On here, on the needle that you have, it will say stretch or denim or heavy duty or general use or something. And sometimes they're color coded. Sometimes they're numbered or lettered. Um, this is just a general use one. I don't actually sew. I could use like a heavy duty one or a wool one. Um, the reason needles are important is because I don't know if you've ever gotten those like they're called thread nests, right? Where you start your sewing project and it's like and there's tons of thread that pops out. Um, your needle combined with with making sure it's threaded correctly is what's going to make that not happen. <laughs> so it's just you just want to make sure that it's the sharpest for the right fabric. So like a stretch fabric or something that requires more, I would say, like precision to get through, you need a sharper needle. Not that it needs to be sharper than normal, but just you just need a really sharp needle. I clipped, I don't really use a lot of pins. These little clippy things are amazing. I don't even know what they're called, the little clips. And I clipped my sandwich together, and now I'm just going to run my um, thread right through here. Here's another little zipper tip. Let me just show you this really quick. So if you, obviously right here, the, the pull of the zipper is like the bulk, right? Like you're going to try and run your sewing machine right here, and it's going to go woo, right around here. So what I like to do is unzip my zipper pull a little bit. I'm going to sew to about here, keep my needle down, lift my foot up, move the pull and then my my stitch is going to be straighter if that makes sense so i'm going to start with this unzipped just a little bit and make sure that this remains lined up just like that so i'll stick it under here and you can kind of feel where your zipper foot lines up so i'm stopping with my needle down lifting my foot moving my zipper pull and then away we go there's any questions, Leah, that you see about the zipper portion, this I feel like is the most intimidating. So feel free to interrupt me. Uh, I will go ahead and first we have a comment coming in from Valencia that the clips that you mentioned are called wonder clips. Oh. So if anybody was wondering about that. <laughs> I'm glad you know. This, be... <laughs> this is why um, community Nothing is so coming important. in specific just yet so if you would like to keep on demoing awesome. I'll let you know if somebody has questions about this zipper part okay perfect so you'll see this is just a nice straight line right Oop, this is stuck nice straight line so here oh, check that out this is the first bottom part of our lip so if you imagine this is your lip right here and you unzip it this will be the inside and this will be the outside so you'll do the exact same thing do the zipper sandwich again with your lining right side up, your zipper, which is already attached to this, and you'll line it up as best as you can. I know it can be tricky because this, this top part is thinner because it's the top part of the lips, so it can be a little trickier. And you'll see, I didn't put my zipper on here exactly even because it's a little bit over, too much over here, not over here, but that's okay. We will fix that. So zipper sandwich, lining right side up, zipper, and then outside or outer lip, right sides down. So wonder clip this together. The new thing I just learned is called a wonder clip. And then you'll use your zipper foot again. And this same technique with making this little zipper sandwich, I said before, can be used for any shape or any zipper pouch. All you have to remember is lining right side up, zipper in between, and then outside, right sides down. And you can make anything into a zipper pouch. Okay, here we go. Just like before, and then I'm gonna use my zipper foot, just like before. 
And once we have this done, we are done with this, the, the whole entire front side <laughs> of the zipper pouch. And it's been like 15 minutes, it's pretty fast. And I am going to again open my zipper like I did before so I don't get that bulk and then stop with my needle down, lift my foot up and move the pull. There we go. Put my foot back down and away we go. Ta-da! I'm not back stitching at the ends because I know I know this is a common question. I know that I'm going to go over it right here. You can you can always backstitch. If you like to backstitch, please backstitch 100%. But I just didn't in that situation. So look it. Here we go. Ta-da. So like I said, this is over just a little bit, but we can just trim that and trim that and it will be still these beautiful lips. So with most zipper pouches, here is a little bit of a caveat. With most zipper pouches, Obviously, you do not want your lining getting caught in the teeth. You know, like when you zip up a, a zipper on a jacket and it gets stuck in there, you don't want your lining to get stuck in your teeth. So what a lot of people do and what you can do is run your zipper foot now or run your, your walking foot or something over the top right here to, to press down. I chose with this that I wanted my lips to be more bulky and full looking. I've never had a problem with the lining getting stuck in the teeth, but that's an option. And that's an option that's written on this pattern in step three, or excuse me, in step two, but we're moving on to step three. So I'm not, I'm not gonna top stitch, but you can if you want to. So step three is you're gonna iron and press this open because whether you top stitch or not, you're still gonna wanna make sure that everything is laying as flat as possible, right? Like, so it's all pulled away from the zipper. So I'm gonna pull this over really quickly and just press this open. And while I'm ironing, Leah, do you see any other questions, too, that are popping through? Um, I'd actually like to first just shout out the community. So if this is your first live event that you're joining, uh, hopefully you've already noticed that that get fed into the chat box just among the community. So Missy has chimed in. Here. She's seconding, seconding that um, you can get an extra zipper pull separately, oh. how you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, so basically just cutting guys. Uh, Deborah is talking about how you can make your own fabric weights if you don't have those coffee pucks work great. You can wrap them in whatever fabric you would like if you want them to look a certain way. And then I would like to see if you have anything to add to comment. Um, you do need to be sure the zipper pull is facing. The you have so tips on how to remember and make sure that when you're making that sandwich. Yeah, I think I'm getting the question. Make sure that the zipper pull is facing up. That's a really good point. I didn't say that. Obviously, when you're making your sandwich, lining right side up, zipper, make sure the zipper is right side up as well. And then you're, you're outside, right side down. Yeah, that's a really good distinction, really good point. I love, and I love in the land of Minnesota, I love that somebody has recommended hockey pucks for weights. <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> that just makes me happy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, like <laughs> I'm just going to keep forging forward and keep asking questions. And if there's any other general questions, this is why community is so cool in the crafting world. I love it, love, love it. At this point, I'm going to change out my zipper foot really fast and take it off, put my normal um, just quarter inch foot on. And now we're going to step three is we're ironing the zipper and attaching the inside lining. So this is lining, right? Right side out. Here we have our right sides out. I'm going to put right sides together. And here's, here's the kicker. Because our zipper is in the middle here, right here, right in the middle of the lips. Um, you can see this isn't lining up perfectly, but that is okay. I'm going to attach just my lining together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch here, stop, and then I'm going to stitch here. And you're wondering, why wouldn't you stitch over the edges? Well, the reason is, is because we want to kind of make the inside separate. I'm going to show you, right? You don't want everything to be bunched super like a, a pancake right here on the edges too close or too far from the very edge. You want it to open up all the way. So I'm just going to stitch here and here with stopping and starting right at the very edge. So you can pin it in place 
you don't have to pin it in place. I'm just moving all the outsides off to one side and I'm just gonna stitch. So, and that is, that is the step three on your PDF. So this I will um, do the back stitch beginning and ending because I don't want my lining ever coming off or coming apart. Just give yourself a quick little back stitch. I'm just using probably eighth inch seam. Um, I don't know that it's super important for linings to be a specific seam width other than making sure it's just consistent. So if you choose to do a quarter inch seam, just do a quarter inch seam on the whole thing. If you choose to do an eighth inch seam, just do an eighth inch seam on the whole thing. And somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But stitching the bottom. The cut button on this Janome is literally my most favorite thing on the planet. So the bottom is stitched, right? Just like that. And then we do the same for the top. So move everything out of the way and then just stitch the top together again, stopping and starting. And this is attaching your lining together. This will be the same whether, I know we talked at the very beginning, whether you choose to use wool or not um, for the outside, this still lining part will be the exact same. The only thing that's gonna be different is how you do the outside or the, the top, if you will. And when I'm, so let me tell you too, when I'm making this, you know, the top of your lip part, I'm just gonna feed this around, stop, my needle is down, lift up my presser foot, and then keep going. And this is the same as if you're doing any other angle, making quilt pieces or sewing, whoop, Holy mother, this is what happens when you're crafting live. This got stuck. There we go. Let's try again. The way that you pivot is just the same like you would pivot on any other project. Oh. Now, Emily, I do have a question about the lining. Yes. Uh, this one comes in from Julie, and uh, Julie is commenting about the lining lining up. So if it looks like yes. it's not lining mm -hmm. up, like you have pointed out yep. in a couple places, your project isn't, yep. should you rip it out and correct it? What would you recommend? So here is, I think maybe we're a little bit of preference. If you didn't just catch, I broke my needle. <laughs> so maybe that's what was happening before. There's nothing like doing this live. Um, so here's, here's where mine isn't lining up is that it's not perfect. You see how like the lining is, mm, I don't know, maybe this is a quarter of an inch shifted over because my zipper, see how my zipper is moved over? So therefore my lining is moved over a little bit. Here's the thing that I love about zipper pouches. You 100% can rip this out. Like 100% you can rip this out and make it perfectly lined up. Zipper pouches, in my opinion, are meant to be used and loved and thrown around and adored. So they don't have to be perfect. <laughs> maybe that should be my motto. It doesn't have to be perfect. However, I do know that some people's crafting preferences is to get things lined up and get them a little bit more square probably than what I prefer. So to me, this little bit, it's like, it's less than, it is about a quarter of an inch just in these couple spots. It doesn't bother me and here's why. The inside lining is gonna be stuffed inside here and it's just gonna add some poof. That's all it's really gonna do. It's not probably gonna super de duper matter that the inside lip peak is perfect with the inside lip peak of the outside, if that makes sense. So if the, if you're just learning zippers and you feel like you want to nail this technique, absolutely. Then rip it out and, and, and try or try it again. Absolutely. However, I'm not a ripper outer <laughs> that often. So I'm probably the, a bad person to ask because I don't, I don't really pre prefer that things are perfect when I'm sewing them. To be honest, I hope that answers your question. Here we go. I have to get a new I one. I hope so. <laughs> and one more question yeah. since you're talking about the lining. Susan is asking if this project is possible to be done without lining. You know what? You probably could. Yes, you absolutely could. So the only difference would be you'd omit that whole lining piece. You'd omit when you're sewing your zipper, you wouldn't make a zipper sandwich. You would only sew your outside to your zipper and then you'd sew your front to your back. It'd be that simple. Yeah, I think the only thing that you need to consider is just make sure, um, the reason I usually put linings in zipper pouches is because depending on the contents of it, what you're gonna use it, if it's pokey, if it's 
a marker that could potentially stain that's just like an extra fabric barrier. Um, yeah, but I don't think you'd have to have it. This is the fun thing about these patterns is they're 100% customizable and you can make them suit whatever you want. I mean, honestly, you could make a ton of these without linings and make them littler for like a cute little hand sanitizer pouch or something to hold something that's more protected. That would be an awesome idea. I love that. Way to go, community. I love these ideas. <laughs> this is great. I'm just re-threading my machine really quickly. Okay. So we are done with step three. We're moving on to step four. And step four is um, stitching together the whole entire thing. So the only thing that you have to keep in mind when you're stitching together everything is to try and make sure that you don't get your lining sewed into your outside, which sounds a little bit easier maybe than it, I don't know if it's hard. I'm not quite sure, but here's, I'm going to show you how I do it. And maybe you're going to say, oh, I have a better way. And if so, please make a comment in the chat. But basically what you're going to do is, so this is a step where if you were to omit the lining, you'd go right from sewing zipper to going to this step. So here's what you're going to do. Ball up <laughs> your inside and kind of roll it on top of each other. That's all. That's that's kind of what I did. If you really wanted to, I bet you could clip it. Here, let's maybe do that. I didn't do that before, but I'm thinking of it right now, and this might actually help. There. So all you're going to do is make sure that as you're stitching around the outside, you're not getting this stuck in here. It wouldn't be the end of the world if you were, because in theory, it's the lining of your thing, but I would want it to make sure that it's not all stuck together. So you will be doing... Right. So, okay. So let me back up for two seconds. If you're doing um, not this raw edge, this is where you will change. You will open your zipper. You're going to, you would sew it like this. So right sides together, and then you're going to flip your zipper, your zipper pouch inside out. Does that make sense? So if you're not using a fabric, that's okay to have a raw edge. You'll sew them right sides together. Make sure your zipper is open first. So you can flip it, open your zipper. So right sides together and then you'll flip it right side out, okay? So that's just a little bit of a modification. Here we go. So this is again why having your lining 100% perfectly lined up isn't probably gonna matter. Oops, this is backwards. So I'm sewing this wrong sides together, which is what's gonna give me my really cool edge. So when I go around here, let me just tell you this, I'm gonna clip this because I don't want it to move, right? Isn't this so cute? I had an idea that I was gonna make one for every one of our neighbors, so maybe I still will. <laughs> I have a couple days before Valentine's, right? Okay, so I'm gonna clip this around the edge. And you'll notice that, right? So here, right here is a little bit bulky. This is the only thing I would caution you, right? Make sure that when you're coming to this point, to this part when you're sewing, that you just still make sure this stuff is out of the way. Just line up your top with your back, clip around the edges. And I note in the pattern in this step five that I like to, I went around my edge a couple times um, around the edge. And I'm gonna do the same today so that you can see that it's kind of this really cool sketchy look and it gives movement to the lip shape. Um, yeah, see? It's already coming together. I'm sure you can visualize now, right? Okay. And again, quarter inch seam, eighth inch seam, it doesn't super matter. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put it under the needle here. And I am going to start at one side and just work my way around. And I'll start a little slow. I'm not going to backstitch because I'm going to go around a couple times, remember? And I really just like the idea of it looking kind of sketchy around the outside of the lips. I'm taking my clips off as I go. And the cool thing, if you wanted to do something really, I've, I thought of this and just didn't do it right now. Um, what you could do also, you know what I'm thinking? I can't have these clips in here. <laughs> I just clip this and there's no way I'll be able to get them out. So don't clip your line. <laughs> That's probably why I didn't do it before. Real life crafting. Everybody. I believe somebody 
just fed that just, in. Exactly. How are the clips coming out of the center? <laughs> I'm so glad people are totally like fine with me just figuring it out as I go, right? <laughs> this is how I craft though. And I feel like this is how people craft, right? We're crafting and we have these ideas and then things are kind of like flowing and you're going, oh, what about this? Oh, what about this? And this is the fun thing about the craft world is that we're all in it together. And then you can tell me, wait, Emily, <laughs> That's not a good idea. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so one thing I was going to say is that I think it would be really cool when you get to this step where you're doing the, out, the outside kind of top stitch, if you will, is to do it in like a really fun color. Neon colors are really hot right now. And I think, I didn't think of this, obviously, as I was packing up my supplies, but it would be really, really beautiful to do just like a wild color around the outside, like neon green, neon pink, something just kind of big and bold um, would be really fun. It would just draw attention to the shape. So I'm at the zipper part. I'm going to pivot. So here, I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to give myself, um, or excuse me, exaggerate this sort of like edge right here. Because A, I want to be able to clip off the excess of the pattern, like this kind of, I gave myself like some excess right here. I want to be able to clip that off and make like a nice good seam. And I also want to make sure that I grab a hold and make sure that zipper is attached perfectly. So I want to make kind of a nice sharp on the sides. You don't have to, again, you don't have to, but um, that's just kind of, oh boy, sorry about that. <laughs> I think I hit the zipper weird. The joys of crafting. This is this is the thing, right? When we craft live or craft at home, this is what happens. There we go. I think something is stuck. Oh. Or not. I don't know. Something just freaked out. But this is what happens, right? I'm just going to start right past that where I was and just keep going. There we go. I think sometimes the thing that can intimidate people about sewing machines is this exact thing, right? Like you're sewing and oh my gosh, something happens. And it's kind of like a human, just turn it off, turn it on and see what happens. See if anything is stuck or broken and then you can go from there. So this is one complete out. So if you wanna be done and you wanna just have one outside, one top stitch, then you'd be done. But I'm gonna go around again because I really want to. And again, I'm making that edge nice and straight on the sides. And I'm not even following the exact same path I did before. I like that um, I'm just kind of following the outside. And if it's the same path, it's the same path. If it's not, it's not. And that's totally OK, because it's going to give these cool lines around the outside edge. This is the spot where my machine freaked out before. So I'm just going to see what happens. Oh, here, I think what happened is the zipper got folded weird. Yep, there we go. Now we're good. Do this as many times as you'd like. And then we're going to trim and we are done. Leah, if there's any questions about this part, feel free to pop it in. Um, I'm starting to actually go back and pick out a few more general questions okay. that we can get to at the end. There's nothing too specific okay. to this part, awesome. but there are people that are really appreciative of you pointing out some of the things that have gone a little bit surprising <laughs> uh, because it's keeping them paying attention and giving them little troubleshooting tips yes. for when their own have a little hiccup. <laughs> I feel like, you know what, it isn't real crafting unless there's some sort of hiccup, whether something isn't threaded properly or you have the wrong needle or foot. This is just how it is. Anybody who thinks it's perfect is psh, totally lying. So here's what I'm going to do. This is the very last step. The very last step is add any flair you want, but also trim up the edges. So like I said before, we're going to trim this part just to kind of make it nice and straight, right? Just like that. Just trim off these sort of bits that didn't line up perfectly. And then we do the same to this side. Just trim the little bits that don't line up perfectly. And it's totally okay because we've our seam is in front of that or, or still holding it all together, so it doesn't quite matter. Look at this. I mean, this is pretty great. And then I always love to um, kind of just take my, obviously you're going to trim off any threads, but um, any little edges here that maybe don't line up, you can trim up nice and 
nice and tight to each other just to make sure that it's all perfect or all lovely. I shouldn't say the word perfect, right? I just said perfect wasn't a thing in crafting. Um, but there we go. This is pretty straightforward. Add maybe here, let's add a little, I like these colors together. I have some pom-poms because pom-poms are key to crafting in my opinion. Throw it through the zipper pull and tie it up. You can add a tassel. You could add a fabric tag with some little Valentine love, love words on there. You can embroider something and add it there. You can add a name and voila, look at that. We just made a little zipper lip pouch. Fill it full of candies or love notes or anything you want. So throw any questions that you see my way, Leah, and we can certainly get an answering them. All right, I'm gonna start with a question uh, right from the very top. So if you've been with us from the very beginning, I've been hanging on to this question because I know it's a favorite and a lot of people are curious about this and it is specific to wool. So mm -hmm. you might be able to guess what's coming already, Emily. If you are using wool, do you need to wash it first? That's a super good question. You can. So what any, washing any fabric will do is it'll take out the sizing or the, I think there's another word for it in like the fabric world. It takes out the sizing of it. And the sizing is like the stuff that will allow it to shrink or not shrink, right? Like it's the stuff that they put while they're making, or it's part of the fabric while they're making it, I should say. I never feel like I need to wash anything that isn't going to become a garment. Now you absolutely can, but the reason I don't is probably because it's one more step. <laughs> I never think ahead to do that. You, so you certainly can. Obviously you'll want to follow whatever your washing machine instructions are for doing wool, which I don't know, probably maybe wash on cold, line dry would probably be the best. Because in theory, what you're doing is you're getting the sizing out of the fabric, right? So the only reason why that matters is let's say you're making a blazer out of this wool, right? You're making a blazer and you make it and it fits just perfectly and then you wash it, it could shrink. So you're kind of pre-shrinking your fabric if you choose to wash something. And this isn't super going to matter if it's pre-shrunk or not. I don't know that I've actually had to wash a lot of zipper pouches. Um, I did make some uh, zipper pouches, and this is another cool thing if you really wanted to, if you live in maybe a warmer climate, you can line your zipper pouches with, um, it's like a, you can either do wax fabric, or I've done like the, the cloth diapering fabric, and, and it'll become like a waterproof bag, and it's awesome. Those I've washed, and so that fabric I will wash ahead of time, but usually anything else I don't. Um, it's preference, I think, for something like this that isn't going to be a wearable garment. Okay, uh, that's a really great answer. And I hope all of you that were wondering about that, because I know, like I said, that's a popular question and wool can be tricky. So thank you for those tips, Emily. I'm gonna move on to a question about the filling um, specific to the lining. So mm -hmm. Damali had asked, can you add a little poly fill between the lining if you want to create a little fuller lip. There are a couple comments in the chat box from people that were engaging with that, but I wanted to give you a chance to talk about any adjustments you'd have to make or any filling suggestions. That is a really fun idea. Now here's what I would probably do. I would probably not use like the polyfill that you buy in a bag that you'd like to make a stuffed animal with. What you could use is like batting. So it's on a roll or it's in sheets because that's more like fabric. And in theory, all you would do was would be cut two, two more of these, like a front and a back, or I guess you could just do one to make it the top and bottom um, and give it bulk. That would be really fun. It could be more of like a puffed lip or a lip that has gotten Botox or something. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's a cute idea. I really love that idea. All right, I'm going to move to Valerie's question next. Uh, Valerie's looking into a new machine and is curious about which model your Janome is. Yes, I love, 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 triple love Janome machines because I feel like they're workhorses and they're incredible. This is the 9450 and it is a machine that I know, I, I, the reason I love it is because you can do almost anything on it. Some machines are workhorses for just quilting. Some machines are workhorses for just doing straight stitch kind of garment sewing. This thing's amazing for all of it. <laughs> it has quite a few stitch options. Um, it has the option to do some, I don't think it does embroidery, but it has the option to do some like lettering like in these stitch options that are kind of at the top. Um, it's pretty simple with that, but as far as like any other option and the durability of it, it is like 
my favorite. And my favorite feature, which I know are probably on a lot of machines, is the where you push the button and it just cuts your thread for you. <laughs> it's the simple things that make me happy, but that really makes me happy because I don't have to cut as many threads on the piece that I'm sewing itself. It's great. So 9450, I think it's technically a 9450 QCP, and I don't know what that stands for, but it's awesome. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move away from the machine to a couple comments about finishing. So Sherry and Dawn have commented on this uh, and I would love to get your input, Emily. Sherry is mentioning using pinking shears to finish if you have the raw edge. And Dawn has suggested adding lace or cording around the border. Anything you'd like to add to those suggestions or techniques people can use if they wanna try them out? I love that lace would be really fun. That would be really fun little added detail. And especially you could use, um, I think it's called Rick Rack, the zigzag stuff. My daughter loves she anything she can put Rick Rack on, she'll tie it on things. Because any the, the, the reality is this is a pretty simple shape. And when you're sewing, you easily could put something right on top. You can add lace, you could add piping. You could do that, of course, between the layers on the edges. I love when people take a pattern and customize it. I mean, you could, you could even embroider right on top here somebody's name, you could do a logo, you could do an emblem, you could do a monogram or something. I mean, something like this is so versatile and, and quite fun and personal to give. I mean, this is this is the cool thing about shooting ideas around like that is now, of course, my brain is going in a hundred ways. And anything along the edges to add pizzazz is really, really fun idea. Or little pom-poms, those little pom-pom trims, that'd be really cool too. I love it. I say do it. <laughs> and then show me on Instagram or Facebook because I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have two more questions that are in the chat box right now. Uh, and then I think I'm going to open it up for some final thoughts from you, Emily. But first, let's go with Sally's. Sally has a really fun question. Have you ever made one of these and added teeth? <laughs> no, but that's awesome. I wonder if, okay, here's what you could do. Here's what would be really fun. You could even add braces to this if you really wanted to. If you had a kid that just got braces and had some orthodontic situations happening, this could be really fun for them. I bet you could add it in like part of the lining or you could get teeth fabric for the lining. That'd be fun. But I bet you could add in little teeth down here so you open it and you actually see somebody's teeth. <laughs> Please, Sally, can you make that <laughs> and just show me? Because I feel like that could just make somebody's Valentine's Day. This is what's fun about these projects is like, to me, it's all about doing something to put a smile on somebody's face. And if that's going to put a smile on your loved one's face, please add teeth. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. We're going to close with another zipper question. Uh, as you predicted, the zipper is yeah. a popular point to ask about. So Charlene is asking, how do you close off the zipper ends if you're not sewing them closed? Sure. I do believe, okay, do not quote me on this, but I feel like I've seen it before. Um, I know that there is a, like a, a clampy, kind of like a button, you know, like the, the button maker things, not like a button like you wear, but like a button on a shirt. I think you can get a clamp for the end of your zipper. I've never gotten that because quite frankly, it's just super easy to sew back and forth really, really easily. Um, if you're not so, but even, even if, let me just say this, and maybe I didn't make this clear before. Even if you're not sewing the, the edge raw like we have on this, on this pattern, every single time I sew a zipper, I have those big zippers and then I cut it and, and sew that stop. So it doesn't even mean that you have to see the stop that you sew, just like sometimes you don't see the stop that's at the bottom of a jacket or that's in a zipper. It's just that it gives it the stop so that the zipper doesn't go off the edge, but it isn't, you don't even have to see it. So you could buy something or maybe Google and see if there's something else out there. Um, I've just always found that doing a you know, back and forth stitch four or five times works just fine to be honest, but there's probably uh, some sort of gadget. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if there is. Make a comment if you find something. I will see that somebody did pop in here. Oh. Crocodile punch. Oh, there we go. Yes, yes. Okay, yep. Yeah, I love that. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the question portion. Our event is done. We've done an entire project. I want to give Emily a chance to give any closing thoughts, any tips that maybe you came up with last minute or just a final happy Valentine's Day. So the floor is yours to finish up, Emily. I love it, thank you. This is a fun project. And I think for, for me and our family, 
holidays like this, it's just, it's a fun and easy way to do something happy during the week, the day, the month, whatever it is. And to, this is a happy project. So whether it's happy because you're making it for your neighbor or your kid or your bestie, or it's just happy because you're making it for yourself, I totally want to encourage you to do something that just makes this holiday a little bit more colorful, a little bit more fun. Because obviously right now we all need a little bit of that in our life. And it's, and it's even more fun to give it and pass it along to somebody else. So make a handful of these or make a handful of simple zipper pouches or even just write a love note because that's always really cool too. And pop it in the mail and celebrate this Valentine's Day. It's the dead of winter where we are in Minnesota. So this is the pick me up that I think we all need. <laughs> All right. Well, that is a very fantastic way to say farewell. And before I let all of you go, a couple things I want to remind you of. First of all, Emily mentioned this a few times throughout today's event. If you are doing any of these projects, either live along with the event on your own time, and you want to share your work with us, make sure to use the hashtag share craftsy. So hashtag share craftsy and you may find yourself featured uh, with any of the items and the projects that you share along the way. We really want to grow this community and you are so fun in the chat box. Let's bring that out to social media as well. And then of course, remember to join us again tomorrow for the love of crafting five Valentine's Day creations from the heart mini series continues. And we will be streaming live with our knitting expert, Jen Lucas. The event starts at 2 p.m. Central Time. And Jen is going to be providing a live tutorial on how to make a knitted heart-shaped dishcloth. You can download the materials list and the free pattern now again using the link in the description and you'll find the way to get access to that free pattern and materials list before tomorrow's event. You can also find the entire mini series schedule in the video description. So with that, I am going to say farewell and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.